Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM, we welcome you all back to our show, as well as tuning in through our online affiliates around the world and also our family at iHeartRadio. We're glad that you all could join us as well. We're excited to welcome entertainment photographer Jonathan Givens to our program today. And Jonathan has done a book that is not only, I think, visually appealing, but also has a great story that's connected with it as well. The book is called Dance Across the USA. We're going to talk to Jonathan not only about his love of photography and being able to bring visuals to you all, um, the, the audience, but also what it was like for him to take on this, this this massive journey that he takes us through in this book, what it was like for him to share some great stories, and what he hopes you're able to take away, not only from the stories, but also the pictures behind them as well. If you're just not hearing about the book, we'll tell you at the end of our segment how you can be able to get it for yourself. Well, Jonathan, I think that the amazing thing about this book for me, and we can kind of begin the conversation here, is not only do you take us through literally across the country, but you give us some great visuals and quotes from individuals that I think people can really be able to connect with, not only, of course, visually, but also when it comes to inspiration and motivation. What has it been like for you already to see the response to the book? Uh, it's really overwhelming, I, I have to say. Uh, you know, we we started a kind of a family with Dance Across the USA, all of the dancers and uh, you know the families involved with all of that, and we've been in our own little bubble for you know, a year and a half, two years now, and uh, seeing it out in the world and people responding to it and, you know, just saying such wonderful things about it, it's it's been more than I had hoped for. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of planning, and I hope people realize this, and that's why I'm so glad we're able to have this conversation. Jonathan, you actually share in the book the planning that went into something this impressive, and also, of course, what it took for you to be able to do it. And I can only imagine, I mean, you share a bit of that story, but I can only imagine as it was going on, you know, the idea of it kind of all coming together. I mean, what was it like for you just as an individual to be able to have an idea and then to be able to see it state after state, you know, photo after photo, to see it being able to actually come to life? Uh, I've always been sort of a just jump in and let's figure it out as we go kind of a person. Um, mm-hmm. So when I when I initially thought of the idea of doing this project, I have to admit I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, mm-hmm. And just as I got into it more, it was really the determination of, of me, my staff, the dancers, everybody, to make this whole thing happen. Um, we got this up and running in about six months, which by all accounts is ludicrous. Um, And and quite honestly, we were still getting permits and locations sorted out as the project was going on. It was a a constant leapfrogging of, you know, what do we need next? And we're two weeks out from this venue and we haven't gotten an approval yet. And what are we going to do if it doesn't happen? And, oh, wait, the dancers just quit. And uh, we have to find replacement dancers because they are in the hospital or, you know, Lord knows what happens. There there was just so many ridiculous logistics that went into this and it was all right well what's our next obstacle we got to figure that out great let's do the next one let's do the next one um you know looking at the whole picture would have been just insane uh, I, I, i'm never a sort of an overview kind of person i like to deal with all right this is what i have to do next and here's the next five things that i need to do Um, Because if you look at it all, it just becomes overwhelming, and my head wants to blow up. (laughs) (laughs) Well, look, I can get it. Now, you know, Kit, did you know – I have to ask you this question before we go any further. The other thing that's so great about this is not only are you able to take these pictures in some wonderful places and share with people, even, you know, from places like the Natchez Trace that we here in Mississippi on the radio audience might be familiar with, to be able to show it in a way we're not used to seeing it. Was that part of the objective, to give people another look at the treasure right in their backyard? It was, absolutely. Uh, so many people have said, you know, oh, I've lived here my whole life and I've never been to, you know, the the, 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 the swamp in Natchez Trace. I've never been to the Statue of Liberty or Bryce Canyon or wherever it was. Um, you know, when you tend to live near beautiful things, you, you think, well, it's, you know, it's an hour from my house or half an hour from my house. It can't be cool. It's close. Um, and people forget that. So it's, 
I, I wanted the project to not only show you know dance as an art form and as a as a career path, but also the the beauty of the country and things that you might not normally expect to find. Um, there are some things where you have iconic views of Bryce Canyon or Grand Central that you know everybody sees it and they instantly recognize it and it's expected. Uh, but uh, you know areas like the Cypress Swamp. You know that's it's a it's a turnoff with one tiny little sign that people don't really notice. Um, you know it's that that whole drive is gorgeous, but you stop just at that one mile marker and you go down the little path and it's a completely different world. Um, mm -hmm. And it's little nuggets of uh, of that kind of beauty that I really wanted to show. Yeah. And there's also something else that you've done in this book. This is something I did not expect because when I was first told about the the project, Jonathan, you know, I was expecting, of course, beautiful pictures. What else would you expect from a talented photographer, right? But you know, I was expecting there to be, you know, of course, a backstory. I did not expect that there would be such jewels of wisdom that you would be able to glean from these these dancers that were a part of this project. Was that a part? Since and it's interesting to hear you say that you didn't really go into a lot of, of you know planning per se, did you know that there was going to be almost this this opportunity for us to get to know the dancers more than just what we see, to be able to know what's also in their hearts? Well, that was another part of the whole project, too. The I, I wanted, uh, when you look at other works that are similar to this, um, you, you don't ever really get a sense of who the people are in the book. It's it's all about mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the photographer, the artist, that kind of thing. You know, well, I, I am certainly proud of my work and what I did. I, it would be useless if I didn't have the dancers there. You know, I am not a landscape photographer. Um, and the collaboration with the artists that I work with is what makes the art really stand out, I feel. Um, mm -hmm. So it always was a collaborative work between me and the performers that I work with uh, to be able to show you know, their personality and get the best work that we could. Um, I find a lot of times photographers that work with dancers, they you know, take the picture of the dancer and then say, yes, look at my pretty picture, look at this thing that I have done. Uh, and they tend to forget that the dancer was doing all the work. All I did is push a button. Um, you know, and I push the button at the right time in the right place and from the right angle. But again, I'm pushing a button. They're the ones sweating out there or jumping around or near the edge of the cliff or whatever it is. Um, so showing the dancers and, and their personality and the thoughts that they had about dance was something I always had wanted to do with this. Yeah. Well, I think it's an amazing thing. We're going to talk more about that. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome my entertainment photographer, Jonathan Gibbons, to our program today. We're talking about his newest project that now you all can also be a part of. It's called Dance Across the USA. It's not only some stunning visuals, but also I think some great insights into the, the, the hearts and minds of the individuals he's able to capture along with these great images. One of those that comes in, that we are able to see in the book is Heather Kahn. On page 239 of the book, uh, we have this great quote from Heather, Jonathan, that I wanted to share with our audience and, and talk a bit about what it was like for you to be able to hear this and then to be able to share it. And it says this, Never give up on the artist in you. The world needs it. Heart and passion will always take you further than you think. Talk to us about that. I mean, you yourself know the power of the arts, of course, and, and, and that, that inner artist and letting it come through in projects like this. What was it like for you to hear those words from Heather? Heather is just an amazing person across the board. She's a, a dance teacher, a professional dancer. She has been working for quite a long time, and uh, from the very beginning, she I knew she was special. Um, that quote that she gave, uh, she, when I was getting the quotes for the book, I was literally texting the dancers saying, hey, give me something that you would like to say to every dancer that you could potentially ever meet. Um, what would you say to inspire them with? And that's what she responded back 30 seconds later. It, it wasn't even something that she had to really think about. She's just like, this is what I want to say. Um, you know, anybody that is a successful working performer is going to know that the the passion that you have is the thing that's going to get you the furthest in life. You can be supremely talented and not have any drive or motivation to be able to show that talent or to work hard at it, and, and you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, you know, you'll you'll you might have some initial success just because people see the talent in you, but if you don't have that personal drive, you're never going to make it. And that's right. something that I have always believed, and that's something that Heather. Um, shares as well, and I uh, was really glad that that was the quote that she had come up with. Yeah, 
Another great one is from Emma Krauss as well. It's found on page 93 of the book. Um, Jonathan, and there uh, Emma says, raise your vibrations and create a life that is yours. I mean, you have been able to envelop that in so many ways. You know, it's it's not uh, – I'm so used to seeing on – you know, on, on television shows sometimes, especially those where stunts are performed. You know, do not you know the you know do not try this at home. Uh, one of the things that you do in this <laughs> this book is let us know, hey, these are real. I mean, but they are just so amazing. These visuals. I mean, did you yourself, as you were going through them, did you have wow moments as you were able to see how they came about? And even as you share in the book, some of these were you know were were things that it was like a one and done because of you know safety issues and that kind of thing. But I mean. Did you have a lot of wow moments as this was all coming together? Every day. Uh, I mean, it, as I was doing the trip, every time, well, I, quite honestly, any time I work with a dancer, I, I always have wow moments there. Just, you know, I get wrapped up with the dancer, and we get excited when we get a shot, and we're we we uh, um, yeah, we're always sharing it back and forth, saying, oh, look what we just got. This is really amazing. What if we try this? Let's do that a little bit. Um, you know, Death Valley in particular, that whole thing was the whole day was a wow moment. I mean, it was 126 degrees when we got there. Uh, we stayed overnight. It were, there was 50 mile an hour winds blowing sand and everything. I, I, I mean, everything. And this sunrise that you see on page 93, that was, uh, you know, the, the following morning after we had been basically up all night long and the sun came up and we ran up to the top of this dune and said, all right, let's see what we can get. And uh, that was the first shot of that morning, that leap that you see there. And we, we shot for about 45 minutes that day. Um, but that one was just, yeah, you, we got it and said, wow, <laughs> from the get-go. Yeah. I, wow. th- there wasn't a state where I didn't have one of those wow moments. Yeah. Is that what keeps this profession exciting and fun for you, Jonathan, not knowing what the day will bring? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've been in entertainment for 30 years, over 30 years. I started as a performer myself, uh, moved backstage into technical work and then directing and choreographing all of that, and the photography came out of this. Um, and being that I get to work with amazing, talented performers, both at the pre-professional and the professional level, I get to share in the excitement of the things that they're doing because I understand it from a performance standpoint. But then from the photographer side, I get to see it and like, wow, that's beautiful. And look, it's great form and you've got great feet and you're, you know, your, 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 your position is fabulous. Um, yeah, it's, I, I can't say enough about it. Yeah. The other thing that I think people will appreciate if you go through literally page by page, and that's what I did because that's the kind of nerd that I am, Jonathan, as I was going <laughs> through the book. Um, and the other thing that struck me, other than the scenery, is how you were able to capture these individuals of different shapes and ages. I mean, we're looking at young people all the way from individuals like we're able to see on pages 96 and 97 with Heidi Lee Hart, um, who's age 56, and others. I mean, Talk to us about that and how important that was for you as you were shooting these beautiful scenes to also make sure that a little bit of everyone was included. Yeah, it, it, I wanted to show diversity. You know, the, uh, the our country is made up by a wide variety of people, and you know, not everybody is a you know a, the same anything. Um, you know, dancers are already sort of a, a social minority as far as a profession goes, um, but uh, within dance. Primarily, dance is a white female art form. Um, you know, something like 86%. One of the numbers that I have seen, you know, it's white females that are doing dance in America. Um, but that's not all that there is. And I wanted to be sure to show as much diversity as I could between dance styles, from ballet to jazz and tap and uh, clogging and you know hula and Native American tribal dance, to the uh, you know gender. Uh, diversity as well as the age diversity um, because dance happens your whole life long you know there are amazing dancers that are in their 80s and 90s that are still running circles around me Um, so just whatever whatever versions that I could show out there to say this is what dance in America is like that's what I wanted to show here and in our follow-up project uh, we're going to be doing one called dance across the world where we'll be going to oh. every country in the world to photograph dancers at UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And when we do that, we want to be able to show the ethnic dance native to that country, uh, as well as 
ballet, jazz, tap, that kind of stuff, to show the differences and the similarities the world over. And you better believe that we will be looking for that 104, that 104-year-old dancer that's mm. in Paraguay or <laughs> whatever we can find to be able to yeah. show that diversity there as well. Yeah. Well, you definitely captured it so well in this book. Um, Allison Payton, another individual we're able to see in the book, age eight, uh, they were able to see profiled. And then there's another individual. The last quote that I wanted to share is from uh, Lily Simmons. Uh, it's found on page uh, 135. Dancing is my getaway, she says. It is not about tricks and flexibility. It's about passion and soul throughout the art. I love dancing because it helps me through life situation. It never gets easy. You just get better. I thought this, every creative needs to copy and paste this and put it somewhere where they can be able to see it. It never gets easy. You just get better. Talk to us about that quote from Lily, but also how you've been able to apply that in your life, Jonathan. You know, Lily is a standout young dancer as well. Um, when I got this quote from her, um, my my wife's first question was, did she write that or did somebody else? And no, Lily absolutely did. Um, she is a very precocious 11-year-old, at least at the time she was 11, um, and an old soul. You know, she's a, she's the kind of person that just knows more than you feel like they should. She's a smart yeah. cookie. Um, and when when she came up with this, it was something that just blew me away. And I actually have it up on the wall of my studio. Um, <laughs> you know, she she is a wonderful woman. And the the, the photo that you see on page 134 and 5, um, you know, in the Badlands of South Dakota, it's just a uh, <laughs> I think it matches with her very well because there's so much depth and complexity to the environment, and it's really right. complemented by her as well. Um, you know, it is something, just that last part, it never gets easy. You just get better. Um, you spend a lifetime doing anything. You are going to improve at it, one would hope. Um, and, but it still remains as difficult as it ever was. Uh, and right. sometimes people forget that, you know, after you've been dancing for 20 years and, you know, you get to do your arabesque and it, it is second nature to you, you forget the complexity that is involved in that. Um, and I think having a respect for the difficulty that you've now mastered for things and a respect for the things that you have not yet even started to overcome, that's something that is very important to artists of all, you know, um, be it photography or musicians or singers or you know, poets or painters, what have you. Um, yeah, I, I think she's she's a very wise young lady. Yeah. It's a powerful thing, and as we, we wrap up this segment, the, the thing that I really hope our audience takes away from this, Jonathan, is that, you know, that your dream, your goal, it, your vision is definitely worth worth the struggle. It's worth fighting for. As you kind of reflect on all that it took for you to be able to bring us this book, Dance Across the USA, is it also a message that you hope the individual listening as well as those who pick up the book realize? I do, and I say that at the end of it. I'm like, this is, this is something that really anybody, anybody can accomplish a goal. Um, you know, everybody has different talents, of course, and it's not always going to be the same goal, but if you have a big dream and there's something that you want to do, do it. Go for it. Get out there and try it. Um, you know, you, the, the biggest regrets that people are going to have in life is something that they don't actually try, not if they try it and maybe don't get where they want it to go. It's the, the what if, the, oh, I should have done that and I never did. Those are the things that people are going to miss out on way more than anything else. So uh, uh, this book was a dream. It was a uh, an amazing thing that I, I still can't believe that we actually pulled off. Um, but uh, you know, it's I'm not special. I, I'm just uh, I'm just a me. I'm a regular, ordinary guy that taught himself how to be a photographer and didn't know anything about making a book, and I did it. Um, and anybody else can. You just have to believe in yourself. Right. I think that's it. What a great message and what a great reminder for all of us. Again, everyone, Jonathan Givens has been our guest. He's an entertainment photographer who's been able to do some amazing work over the years that continues with the book, Dance Across the USA. So, Jonathan, let our audience know, how can they stay connected with you as well as how can they get the book for themselves? Well, you can follow the project through our website, danceatusa.com. Oh, dance across the USA dot com. Um, it, you can also find the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, any other place where you would buy books. Uh, we're of course on social media, Facebook, um, and 
uh, Instagram as well, and Twitter, although I don't really know how Twitter works. I'm still learning, so <laughs> forgive me there. Um, but, yeah, if you search Dance Across the USA or my company, Entertainment Photography Specialists, uh, EPS, you will find us there. All right. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it, and looking forward to our next conversation together. Thank you so much, Cyrus. I really appreciate it. Oh, the pleasure is definitely all mine. And we thank you, our audience, for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. If you all came in late and missed part of the conversation with Jonathan, don't worry. Thanks to our online friends, you all can catch the replay right after we go off the air. The link is already available through our social media sites. So head over to Facebook.com slash Cyrus Webb or go to Twitter.com slash Cyrus Webb. If you click on the link there, you can listen to the show completely for free and share it with your friends from there, too. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You all make it a great one.